grade 10. In this lesson, we will investigate resistors in parallel and how this affects the current and voltage in a circuit. Let's remind ourselves what it means to connect resistors in parallel. In a parallel circuit, components are placed alongside each other. The circuit may have two or more branches. Look at this animation. Current flows through both the resistor and the light bulb in parallel at the same time. You can see that some of the electrons travel through the resistor, while some travel through the light bulb. At point A, the total current splits up, travels down different paths, and then rejoins at point B. Now let's have Troy and Drew as he investigates how voltage behaves in a parallel circuit. Let's investigate current in a parallel circuit by setting up a circuit. I will use two resistors. One has a resistance of 10 ohms and the other has a resistance of 15 ohms. We will measure the current through the whole circuit as well as the current through each individual resistor. We will also measure the potential difference across the whole parallel combination. Let's see now what our circuit's going to look like. In this diagram, the resistors are placed alongside each other, that is, parallel to each other. Ammeter A1 measures the current through resistor R1, which has the lower resistance of 10 ohms, while ammeter A2 measures the current through R2, which has the higher resistance of 15 ohms. AT measures the total current supplied by the battery. The voltmeter measures the total potential difference across the resistors. Let's take a quick look at our electric circuit. Here I have my two resistors in parallel. Here's R1, the 10 ohm resistor, and R2, the 15 ohm resistor. I've got my ammeter connected to measure the current that flows through R1 in the parallel combination. Let's now take the reading for the current passing through R1. If we use the top scale, we can see now that the needle is lying on 0, 0.35 amperes. Let's write that down on our table. I1 here represents the current passing through R1, and we write it down as 0, 0.35 amperes. Let's now measure the current passing through R2. Notice that the needle has settled on 0, 0.25 amperes. Let's write that back onto our table. I2, which measures the current through R2, is 0, 0.25 amperes. Now for our third current reading, which will measure the total current in the circuit. Notice that the reading is now 0, 0.6 amperes. Let's take that reading and put it onto our table. IT stands for the total current in the circuit, which was measured as 0, 0,6 amperes. Now that we've collected readings for current in the circuit, let's see what these readings actually tell us. Do you see that the current that passes through each branch is very different? A greater current passes through branch 1, which has a lower resistance than branch 2. The greatest current passes through the ammeter, which is measuring the current supplied by the battery of cells. Let's now add up the current that pass through branch 1 and branch 2. So if we now add up I1, which is 0, 0,35 amperes, and I2, which is 0, 0,25 amperes, 0, 0,35 plus 0, 0,25 gives us an answer of 0, 0,6 amperes. But what do you notice? Well, I hope you can see that this value that I've just calculated is exactly the same as the current passing through the ammeter, which measures the current supplied by the battery. Therefore, the current supplied by the battery, which will be IT, is the sum of the currents of each branch. Therefore, I1 plus I2 must equal IT. Now what can we learn from these results? Current divides up in a parallel circuit. 
the branch with a lower resistance carries the higher current, and the current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the currents through the branches of the circuit. Now let's measure the potential difference across the resistors. But first, let us go back to our circuit diagram to remind us what the circuit looks like. The voltmeter will measure the potential difference across the parallel combination. I have now connected in the voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the entire parallel combination. If I close the switch and using the middle scale, I can see that my voltmeter is measuring 6 volts. Let's now write that down onto our table. The potential difference is now measured at 6 volts. The potential difference across the entire parallel combination was 6 volts. Let's see now what the potential difference will read across each resistor in the parallel combination. I will start with resistor 1. Can you see that resistor 1 is measuring 6 volts? And now for resistor 2, can you see that the reading is also 6 volts? Do you see that the potential difference across each branch in the parallel circuit is exactly the same? This is very important, so please learn it. The potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. Now let's investigate the effect on electric current when I add more resistors in parallel to our parallel circuit. Here's our circuit board and I've added the third resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, to my circuit. I now have one, two, three resistors in parallel. Now before we take any readings, I want you to think about this. What will happen to the current in the main circuit supplied by the battery when another resistor is added in parallel? A. The current increases. B. The current decreases. Or C. The current stays the same. Let's now try and answer that question by repeating our experiment, this time using all three resistors in parallel. The current through resistor 1 is 0.35 amperes. So in our column, I1 is 0.35 amperes. The current through R2 is 0.25 amperes. So in our table, we write down for I2, 0.25 amperes. The current through R3, the additional 10 ohm resistor which is connected in parallel, is 0.35 amperes. So for I3, we write down 0.35 amperes. And now to measure the total current in the circuit, our ammeter reading is 0.95 amperes. Therefore, for I total, we can write down 0.95 amperes. I have now connected the voltmeter across all three resistors in parallel. Let's now take the reading. Can you see now that the needle on the voltmeter has stopped on the 6 volt mark? Let's now write that into our table. Voltage is 6 volts. Now what can we learn from these readings? Well, do you see that the current through each of the parallel branches 1 and 2 remain exactly the same? but the current in the main circuit increases. Now if we add up the currents in the three branches of the circuit, we will get an answer of 0 0.95, which is exactly the same as the reading on the ammeter in the main circuit. The potential difference remains the same across all three branches of the parallel part of the circuit. So can you see that the battery supplies greater current the more we add resistors in parallel into our circuit. Let us now summarize what we have learned from these results. When adding a resistor to a parallel circuit, the current through each of the parallel branches remains the same, the current in the main circuit increases, 
the potential difference remains the same, and the battery supplies a greater current as we add more resistors in parallel. So Bruce has shown us that current divides in a parallel circuit while the voltage remains the same. We also need to know how to calculate the resistance in a parallel circuit. The formula that we use to calculate the total resistance in a parallel circuit is 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 where R1 and R2 are the values of the resistors in parallel. The total resistance in a parallel circuit is also called the effective resistance. Let us again join Bruce as he shows us how we can use this equation to calculate the effective resistance in a parallel circuit. Calculate the resistance of two resistors connected in parallel. R1 has a value of 200 ohms and R2 has a value of 250 ohms. Well, the first thing we must do is write down our formula. 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Let's now substitute in the values for R1 and R2. So it's 1 over 200 ohms plus 1 over 250 ohms. Use your calculators and you should be able to get an answer of 0 0.009 ohms to the minus 1. Now here is an important part of the problem. What we have just calculated is 1 over R effective. We need to now calculate what the value of R effective is. Please watch what I do carefully. If 1 over R effective is equal to 0, 0.009 ohms to the minus 1, then what we must do to get R effective is find the inverse of 0, 0.009. Using your calculators, you will find that the inverse of this value is 111 ohms. So to conclude, the effective resistance of these two resistors connected in parallel is 111 ohms. As you can see, these calculations are a little bit more complicated than calculating the effective resistance for resistors in series. We must remember to invert the expression so that we determine the value of the effective resistance and not just its reciprocal value. Before we try another calculation, let us take a careful look at the value we've just obtained. We know that the two resistors have values of 200 ohms and 250 ohms, and they were connected in parallel, and that the effective resistance is 111 ohms. This shows us that connecting resistors in parallel reduces the effective resistance on the circuit and therefore it will increase the current in the circuit. This is a very important characteristic of parallel circuits. Let's investigate it on our circuit board. Here I have my electric circuit with a light bulb in the main part of the circuit and two resistors in parallel. Watch closely what happens to the brightness of the bulb when I close the switch. Now what do you think will happen to the brightness of the bulb if I connected another resistor into my parallel circuit? Well, let's see if you're right. Well, here is my third resistor connected in parallel into my circuit. I'm now going to close the switch and I want you to have a look at the brightness of this bulb. Can you see any difference in the brightness of the bulb compared to our previous experiment? Well, I'm sure you will all agree that the bulb is glowing more brightly with the third resistor in parallel than it was in our previous experiment. Now, what does this observation prove? Well, let's go back to our circuit board. This shows us that the current in the main circuit has increased. Therefore, it confirms our finding that the effect of resistors connected in parallel is to decrease the resistance of the circuit, thus increasing the current. Let me close the switch again and look at the brightness of the bulb. 
It is interesting to note that the effective resistance of a parallel combination is less than either of the two resistances of the resistors in parallel. Let's go back to our paper graphic. Can you see that my effective resistance of 111 ohms is less than the 200 ohms of R1 and the 250 ohms of R2? The big question is, why does this happen? Well, to answer that question, let me remind you of an experiment we carried out using the cross-sectional area of a conductor. We used a length of thick copper wire and measured the current passing through it. And then we exchanged the thick copper wire for the same length of thin copper wire and measured the current passing through the thin wire. We found that thicker copper wire allowed a greater current to pass through it. This experiment proved that a length of thick copper wire has less resistance than the same length of thin copper wire. In other words, the resistance decreases as the wire's diameter increases. The less the resistance, the thicker the wire. In a parallel circuit, as we increase the number of branches in the circuit, we are effectively increasing the diameter of the wire through which the current can pass. So therefore, the effective resistance of the circuit decreases and the battery supplies a greater current. Now let's try a last problem, and this time we're going to use the concept of basic fractions to help us calculate our answer. Two identical resistors are connected in parallel with each other. Their effective resistance is 10 ohms. What is the resistance for each resistor? Well, let's write down the information. They've told us that the effective resistance is equal to 10 ohms. Let's write down our basic equation. 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now let's substitute into the problem. 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now if R1 and R2 are identical and using the concept of basic fractions, then 1 over 10 must equal 2 over R. I now need to get R on its own, so I must now invert the problem. 10 over 1 is equal to R over 2. Calculating for R, we cross multiply. 10 multiplied by 2, and that gives us a value of 20 ohms. So therefore, R1 equals R2 equals 20 ohms. Before we wrap up, let's summarize what we know about parallel circuits. Current divides up in a parallel circuit. The branch with the lower resistance carries the higher current. The current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the current through the branches of the circuit. The potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. We can calculate the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel using the formula 1 over R effective equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Connecting resistors in parallel reduces the effective resistance of the circuit and increases the current in the circuit. And lastly, the effective resistance is always less than either of the two resistances in parallel. Bruce has shown us very clearly all that we need to know about resistors in parallel. In our next lesson, we will do more examples to calculate the resistance of parallel resistors and show you a different equation you can also use. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about circuits at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Please remember to try some of the questions in the task video. Goodbye.